too, because you can't get out of the. Uh... Right, uh, too. It can be annoying. Yeah, but you could make that case for like a lot of heroes. The fact that he just has place. Ten seconds remaining. Five Big play potential. Remaining. And st status resistance, like status resistance, his ultimate. This is a very useful and makes him like very annoying to deal with in the fights. I, I'm still enjoying the uh, throwaway tree animation on kills. When you just like when you just walk it. away from someone and you just toss it at someone as the last <laughs> thing you're going to throw at them, and you walk away the other way, and the other guy blows up. I, I, it's Dota's very, it's very satisfying somehow. Dota's answer. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta remember that the next time it happens. I feel like. Ten seconds remaining. I can conquer like the Ursa is like uh, I feel like from my perspective the way I understand the Ursa pick is when they are up against like a pressure lane from the opponent opponent has a really strong off lane and they they feel that Ursa is a carry that can absorb the pressure you go to the lane you skill more points into your earth shock and you deal with the pressure thrown at you and the the conquer is like uh just I think mostly for the gyro I'm not sure if there'll be any other reasons for that. But Fogg was like telling us that he, he feels that the hero is very strong now to the point where he can also play him as a carry because of the talents. Five seconds remaining. Talents are just have... 40 damage, level 10. Yeah. So, so they'll go with the Tuss. Yeah. Tuss DP. So we can get some kills. Yeah, Are you very... surprised they didn't go with the Disruptor? For pain. Nah, they'd have a really awkward support duo then. I mean, sometimes you see like double range support like Kotal Rubik or like a Dark Reload Rubik. But I think in general, like most, most teams are like want to have like a melee, like yeah. a initiating hero, then you have the standard like a range hero, like pain. Profit, which not much farm. Ten seconds remaining. Capitalize on that. Five seconds remaining. That's terrible, right? <laughs> yeah. There's something like Jug 2 that they ran earlier today. I mean, for, for HFN, would you think like Jug is, will be more suitable? Because he's like a really aggressive player <laughs> trying to, you know, always like push out lanes. Oh! oh I, I think this was the. Uh, Tabo Pango. Yeah, this is uh, the other team that you guys said yeah. might pick Pango. Yeah, yeah. We, we picked two teams on day one that we said if, if Pango was going to be picked by anyone, it would be picked by Payne and by Maneski. And, and they have the Tuss as well again. Done that. Yep. Tuss with the shots, like I mentioned before. Oh, yep. Very, very good with the rolling thunder. If Secret loses to Pengo twice. twice. <laughs> they're they're yep. banning that hero. Is is Naga in the pool? No, Naga's not in the pool. Okay. Yep. Like, to me, like Naga is the biggest uh, counter to it. It's like Pango. Yep. There's and, a lot and Secret Bandit. And weirdly, Secret Bandit last time as well. Mm, there's a lot of like soft counters. Like we saw like, the, the Bloodseeker game, like I mentioned, did, isn't so bad for the Pango. It's still fine for him. Yep. I think Secret of Bandit Naga in every game here. If I'm not mistaken. Yep. I'd have to check, but I'm fairly sure we've seen them ban it in every game we've seen on this stream. Talked about how, how pain like Look directly at her plate again. This yeah. is almost the same. But eerily similar. I don't remember if it was a drop in the game, but. Yeah. No, they had a mid Omni. Omni. Yeah, they did, yeah. yeah. It was Omni Disruptor Tus. And do you know what's really funny? The Razor Abba were both the two bands. Hmm. So we had an Arc Warden ban, second phase. Is, isn't the, like the Abba rather strange? I, I think we, yeah. I remember we, 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 we were talking about it before. It was not really was it the previous yet? game. Wh which game it was? Uh, there was also this one game that. Uh, oh, it was the Mineski against Secret game yeah. as well. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, they they banned the Razor and the Abba mm. in the first three. It's uh, because Fata. Yeah, because of Fata. Yeah, I guess I guess that's all it is, right? But it's not a natural counter, is it? 
the Pangolia? Mm. Not really, though. No, it's just oh. a good fodder hero. Like, okay. he dominates on that hero. Yeah. It drags so much attention away from the other two lanes. Pressures the tower, and then he, like, he, he gets this early helm. He puts a lot of pressure on your team, then he, like, transitions into a Radiant. So he's, like, very strong later, like, throughout the game, I'd say. So they go for the Lone Druid, something that was uh, banned in the last phase, the previous time. So they are going to have a lot of flexibility with the two supports like moving around the map. <laughs> the mid Omni's banned. <laughs> None of that stuff going on. They're trying to figure out what Father Hero is going to come. Um, there's Tide, there's good, Underlord. Good luck with that. Yeah, good, good luck with that very deep pull. Five seconds remaining. They still don't know what the safe lane is from Pain either, though. Do you want, uh, do you want his top 10 right now? Sure. Bat, Tide, Razor, Abaddon, Underlord, Axe, amazingly, Pugna, LC, Bristle. Played 10 in the last turn to pick. The Pugna, this game. Power. With the Rolling Thunder, you're not really of the Pugna, but time that you're Ten not in that. Remaining. I feel really sorry for the Tusk, by the way, who's being Five skewered by the Pango. They're gonna be best buddies. They're off, gonna be though. best buddies in the game, you know. They're gonna yeah. work together. Ah, uh, Doom. Okay, not one we had on the list for Fada, but okay. I guess they just want to make sure that this pango is not going to be a nuisance. Yeah, is that what they're going to do it for? Is they going to tuck him away? Middle of the fight? Probably. They're going to make sure that they get... Like, if DP has her ultimate up, you don't really want to doom her. Unless before she pops it. So I guess mainly you want to doom the pango so he doesn't annoy the whole fight. Yep. It does work both ways, right? You get the jump on the... Trying to end the fight. Right well, that's there. the other thing right yeah. now, isn't it? That they would have had a chance to have discussed how to deal with the pango. After they played against it, they'll have a much better idea, won't they? Alright, if you're gonna go crazy, pick Wraith King. It's good against the Lone Druid Bear. Yeah, it's, it's good, good against, against Doom. Doom. If I'm pain gaming, take a risk. I think they already took a risk. I, I don't think Pango it's already is, a risk. Is Pango a risk? Well, well, it's a good hero, though. I don't think it's like Medusa. Take advantage. If I had crazy ideas, I would say Clink's I mean, Rave King, Rave King is not even that crazy, though. It makes a lot of sense. It's pretty rational, logical. It's really good against two of their cores. It works well with their heroes. Wouldn't Medusa be pretty disgusting as well? Mm, Medusa would be like some, some, something like a very cheese. greedy drama. Like, not really cheese, but very like, cool. greedy. Okay. A PA. Haven't seen too many of those. Seen plenty of bands. Phantom Assassin. So I think is gonna is gonna take the PI. He did get a pretty substantial buff, so not, pretty much you can always throw the dagger. Like even against like BKB units, it's still you do, still do damage, and you can even kill couriers with it. Okay, gents, it's time. Have we learned our lesson about Pangolia Winter? Yes. You but... already knew the lesson anyway. Yeah, you went I mean... with Mineski last time. <laughs> you go with the Pango again this time. I was trying to convince everyone. You that were, they're... and I think everyone else afterwards was like, oh, I wish you'd said that earlier. <laughs> I mean, uh, I think it's difficult to go with pain here, so I'm just going to go with secret. Just okay. so that you don't come up with that 122 whatever record right. that I have. Yep. The one, you've got one correct <laughs> and 3,463 <laughs> wrong so far at this tournament alone. Uh, Will? Uh, I'm gonna go with the Pango. Okay. Undefeated. Undefeated. It's got a hundred percent win rate on land. Win rate. Yep. Stats don't lie. Yeah, stats yeah, don't I lie. Like it, Jack. <laughs> so it seems, it seems we took different lessons away from that Pango game. My lesson was that Ice Ice, 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 Ice is not on Pain Gaming. Therefore, <laughs> <laughs> you got in Tavo. <laughs> That's Tavo, my man. I, I I love the logic. Um, I love the logic, Jack. That's that's very good. Okay. Um. There is no ice, ice, ice on Pain Gaming. That much is true. Uh, what is not true is that the game is not decided by panel members. So let's head over to our commentary team for Pain Gaming's Pangalia Penanza. 
Yeah, thank God we don't give that much that much power to our panel. Mm. Uh, maybe this is the Kryptonite Pangolier against Team Secret. 100% uh. win rate against them. <laughs> I got to go with very, Jack on this very one. Very small sample size. No, there's uh, no Ice Ice Ice. Ice 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 is undefeated on Pangolier. Okay. Tavo has never won a game professionally playing Pangolier. I think that's the important okay. thing to I'm, know. I'm glad you added that last bit in there, of, like playing Pangolier, because mm -hmm. that would have been even more... Uh, but Pain Gaming, yeah, they they need they need something. There's zero five so far in the tournament standings. Team Secret also want to grab this win so they can still contest. If they lose this game, they can't contest the second position anymore. It'll just be straight down to E.G. Maneski. Um, so there is no situation. Like it would always be, already be a weird situation for them to claim uh, the top two. Uh, so keep the hopes alive at least by grabbing a victory in this matchup and keep them out of potential elimination. So, lane-wise, how are we looking? We have a lone druid for Ace. Surprise, surprise. Heading up towards the north. Um, it'll put mid one into the mid lane as the tiny and then down on the bottom lane. A bit more aggressive. Puppy's first pick, Witch Doctor. We're used to this by now. Yapsaw's ES. Gonna be working with Fada's off lane, Doombringer. This is up against Duster's Bane, HFN, Safe Lane, Phantom Assassin. And they're still actually going out of this. Like, this is still farther. Okay, Paralyzing Car, scrolling Boulder in. Duster, King RD. He's just rotated in with that Tusker. Shards on cooldown. Duster, he will go down. Farda losing so much life as well. You got the first blood for Team Secret. But losing your offlaner and then potentially your secondary support. Rolling Boulder off cooldown right now. Yapsaw, he's got the distance. He's got the speed. And he has got the life. The thing is that what they really wanted to do was deal with the creep wave. So trading one for one and getting the pull off is worth because now it'll secure that Doom actually has a game. Oh, Puppy's trying to come in to contest the pull point. I like, he's actually he's body blocking it. That's why he put himself in that position. But now the radiant creep wave is here too. <laughs> Gets brain sapped out, and uh, Duster with the brain sap is the man to get the kill. Yeah, I mean he blocks the camp, so that's a win in a sense. But is it? Uh, yeah, is it? Yabzor and Fada come back in again. They are really wanting to keep this Doombringer out with a Shards Fada. It's this one armor Doombringer that just cannot sustain against the damage output. And how long can Secret keep this up? Like, do they want to keep this up as well? You've got a lone druid up against a up against a Pangolier. This is a very I wanna say it's easy, but there seems to be a lot of CS coming the way of Pangolier compared to Ace. Yeah, definitely. The taunt. <laughs> Ah, oh, such a good one. I really like it. Is. Bottom lane, Yapsaw's in trouble. He has no rolling boulder, and they're, no, they're just letting HFN kill him slowly under the tower. Yeah. It took a couple of extra hits for it, but a kill's a kill. It's similar to the last game, where they just get too aggressive in the massive creep wave. They're the going again. Yeah. Snowball is coming off cooldown in half a second time, potentially underneath the tier 1 tower. Uh, they got a full creep wave with them too, so Stifling Dagger, Scorch Earth will give Fade a little bit more movement speed, but they were waiting for it. They just shot him up, and Pain Gaming claimed their fifth kill. That TFTP? Oh my god. It's great! Tavo just wants the Coria, but he can't get it. Yeah, I'm sorry, Puppy control him, and uh, that's an offlane Pangolier that will uh, will die. There's three kills on HFN in two minutes. Yeah, it's it's not the hero that Secret wants to be getting such a good start, but the thing is, at least they ran out of mana, so they can no longer kill Fata, even though he has three deaths. He's going to collect like level three and a half under this tower, mm -hmm. and then he'll have a double wave to fight with as well. It's, it's a diminishing returns, right? Mm -hmm. Ever since the changes. But hey, Bane's getting more out of this too. They're finally now pulling the wave back, so they try and get a little bit more control. The one lane we haven't really looked at at all is that mid lane, mid one. Uh, He's got a couple of, a little bit more regeneration up his sleeve. Death Prophet just burned her salve. But uh, DP can definitely add uh, some nice tower pressure once she's got that exorcism up. That mid one, I suppose mid one can just destroy the creep wave. Uh, I really like the PA last pick in this game, as long as he gets ahead. And as you can see, he already has the three kills, and he's free farming. And this is the hero Pains needs to look at to carry them throughout this game. His only, uh, his only real weakness is that if he falls behind, there's so much burst damage from Secret and so much magic damage that he could just die. Um, but I think he'll be fine. He's got a great start. And I actually think it looks good for Pain already. Yeah, he's 600 net worth in front. You actually kind of wonder it too. Like, you pick up the Pangolier, we, we mean, we joke, we laugh about it. But he can still be very effective in the fights. But the Phantom Assassin is just one of these heroes. Okay, Tavo going after Puppy. As uh, Puppy did put the level 1 maldict on him, oh. Tavo pushes away. 
Buffy still surviving as here comes the Absol Tavo. You can taunt all you want. He's so low on life. They can use the crew to get vision up high ground. Earth Spirit can't close the distance. Meanwhile, Doombringer does die in the bottom lane. Tavo jumps out, salves up, then burn it on air. It sounds so much like Star Wars. I'm just saying now. <laughs> they ran a... right ending. Their Pango draft is very similar to Maneski's as well, where they have a really hard carry in the PA that's also not necessarily tanky, but he counters Tiny and Lone because you really just can't hit him. They're going to miss 50% of the time. And then they also have a DP, which is a naturally uh, high sustain, very tanky core. And they can just count on PA to do the damage, and these guys can just stay alive. They're going again on Farda. So easy to close the distance when you got that Phantom Strike. Paralyzing cast from Puppy will split things up, but then the cast bounces down into the creep wave. The Hadouken inside of Farda, combining with the Malediction, gives the kill back the opposite direction. Farda now trying to salve up himself into the trees. that cancel with a stifling dagger, and the last hit from Duster. Finishes the job, but Duster as well as HFN, they're still inside the trees. It's not the easiest fight for them. The mid battle, however, going on. You lost the Death Prophet. It was a one for one trade off. Tavo's rotation was able to mop up Yapsaw as mid one retreats back towards that tier one. And it was not enough for Bane to get out of that tree line in the bottom lane. So, Fada and Puppy shared the kill as the tower did a lot of the work as well. In the meantime, Ace is just all alone up top, free farming. I'm curious to see if he goes for the Midas Rush or the HOD. He's got the... Uh, it's only a glove of haste so far in his quick buy. Oh no, it's uh, he has full HOD items on Courier. So that's the... That, I like that a lot. He traditionally... He was the guy that kept starting with Midas, but I think that this build change has made this hero a lot stronger. He gets the root already. Well, that's nice. Nice bit of luck. Tavo copying a lot yeah. of damage and the body block from the bear gave more time for Ace to attack in. Tavo needs more time. He's going to bottle around the trees as well as one charge up and then a quick jump away. Ace, he can dive this with the bear. If he gets a first hit and tangle, this dive could keep going. And Tavo <laughs> into the trees. Support's coming in. It's a Phantom Assassin who TPs towards what? the top. But an instant savage roar. And it's HFN running away and Ace back into the safety of the lane. So maybe it's time for rotations. As Yapsaw does exactly that. Kills off Tavo. Has the observe board on the hill. Probably thought he'd be coming in for the shrine usage. Middle lane, mid one. Okay, he's... He's being zoned out by King RD. Um, so it's the catapult, so there should be a heavy amount of damage into the tier one. I really don't like this PA teleport top. He was free farming bottom, and now he's gonna have to run all the way toward bottom again because you can't lane against a lone druid with HOD. Not possible. Yeah. Well, Pangle is now down the bottom lane. Mid tower, mid one actually got the denial, and here comes Yapsaw in from the side, but Phantom Assassin attacking into mid one. Yapsaw puts down the boulder, so you at least have the silence. He can't stifling dagger, which means there's no way for HFN to finish off mid one. Yapsaw will pick up the double kill, saving the life of his mid. But revenge is on the way. Dust up, brain sap, so much damage so quickly into Puppy. Level six is finally onto the Phantom Assassin. But the T1 tower on the top lane being taken by Ace while everyone is absent. Yep, and this is the issue for Pain right now is that their whole team is centered around this PA and the tempo timing of Seeker is going to be so high. Look how far Yapsor is. He has five kills already. Yep. Not a bad day for him. He's got more net worth than the Tiny has. Mm -hmm. Almost 3,000 net worth on him. Meantime, DP falling Tusk is behind. dead, potentially. Nightmare on the bottom, but it's uh, Ace... Chasing down King RD, he's able to get the entangle, bottom lane, Tavo just rolling, bouldering through, looking for that hit, just pushing around these Team Secret players. He misses the attack, however, onto Fada, so Fada will be able to survive. The Phantom Assassin's gone, the Bane will join him. Team Secret brought everybody but Ace down to this bottom lane, which means they'll keep pushing. Yep. Ace is just loving the space right now. And he, he hits towers so hard as well. He's going to look to pressure mid. This is going to force rotations. And in the meantime, PA just died. And Doom hasn't even used Doom yet because he's not six. But I assume he'll run straight at this PA when he is. DPs are coming in. Like, uh, actually towards the mid lane. So, Duster can really close this up with the lone draw bear. There's no way to defend the bottom tier one tower. Like, team secret. They already did so much damage to that. Top lane is where, like, Pain Gaming have a potential for trade. Puppy has already begun his TP into the trees. Just, uh, 
it's so hard now for Pain because the the PA is so so weak. He can no longer play as aggressive as he was during the laning phase, and he's forced to just like farm. But as soon as this Earth Spirit hits six, him plus any hero on his team is going to land a kill on him very easily. It's just so much magical damage output. Yeah, that uh, that decision is something I'm fairly certain the panel. I'll uh, go over pretty closely about that decision to TP top. If he gets the kill on Ace, things are great, but fair Savage roll, you knew it was going to come. Now here comes your TP support in from Secret. They already used their fortification, mid one. Can toss Doom in, Fada has his level 6, so the Troll Trap Nightmare from Dust to create some space. Spirit Siphons off from Death Prophet, plus some one charges. The kick flies through from Yamso, a little bit off target. Arms needs some life, he's got eight one charges. Now the phase moves from Move for Speed, into the trees and far away. The Ghouls give him the life back again, so Lone Druid does go down to the PA, but it's up in that tree line that you'll lose arms. So Phantom Assassin, a much needed kill for him. Progression for the Phantom Assassin. But that pressure on top lane, you knew Secret was going to answer. It was taking way too long for Pain to push it. Yep. It's going to be all about towers. The issue with Pain's draft is that they only really pressure towers with DP, and he's fallen so far behind. And this seems to be a common theme of Pain's games, where they're not doing too badly, their drafts make sense, they play well, but then ARMS is just kind of lagging behind the rest of his team. You wonder if that's also because of the space just not being created for him, like... The amount of pressure which is coming in from every single team at this tournament. You make space for one hero and that's probably already hard enough. And that one hero is the Phantom Assassin. Pangalier is going to steal the DD. Maybe he's going the exact same items as Isis Ice was. Which makes sense. It is by far the most successful Pango build with 100%. Successful Pango player. Uh, revealing up on top, Arms will die. Four heroes smoke up, gank onto the Death Prophet. No reason to use the one charges. She can spirit siphon. Actually, she did burn the one charges. But she was totally dead. Indeed. And Me now too. Pain actually smoke up themselves. So Death Prop is dead for 20 seconds. They're pinging bottom lane, so it looks like they're going to try and assault Ace. He might be going full range build in this game. He's already finished phase boots on his hero now, and he's going Aquila next. So he might just be skipping Radiance entirely, which I don't mind because. The key timing to killing a PA, if you're not just crushing the game, is the MKB. Mm -hmm. And I think range form Lone Druid can get that a lot faster than uh, Bear. They need to get this uh, slow onto Ace with the double damage of Tarbo. They're going to do so much work. Savage Troll, that's why Tarbo kept the distance, pushing around, but not pushing him out what? off the shards. But they still don't kill him. Yabzor instead turns this fight with the double kick, double silence. Tavo jumps away. Yabzor's rock wasn't close enough, but now he can rolling boulder forward. Gets close, close the distance on Tavo. And Pangolier will die. Meanwhile, in the mid lane, Phantom Assassin going on Puppy. Maledict is on him, as well as the damage from the Death Ward. 17 one charges. Looks like PA feels confident enough to survive. Especially considering no one else is coming closer to her. It's a big kill. He's still on top of the net worth, but he needs to continue snowballing, which is hard for a PA. You don't have wave clear until Battle Fury, so this next two to four minutes is really key for him to maybe grab one more kill and just continue to accelerate, but... Uh, I'm afraid if you look at secret scores, like the Lone Drew Tiny are very far ahead of their counterparts in the pack. Tiny's gonna get more aggressive soon. Just picked up the Shadow Blade, so mid one. Has the ability to fight nice and hard. King RD is. He didn't see him, it's unfortunate for him because he has the Invis rune looking for a nice target. Now he sees Yaps are rotating as well, so. Mid one, hides inside of Roshar, waits for the Shadow Blade to come off, but there's your Avalanche toss combination, and Pangalier, thanks to the silence of Yapsaw, had no way just to bounce himself out of the fight, but Fiend's Grip into mid, Lone Druid in trouble, lockdown controlled. Another big kill, but you're happy with this trade off if you're paying gaming, keeping that Lone Druid down, arms. Looking to have a crackdown on bottom lane, Father starting his TP, King RD needs the vision to snowball forward. And unfortunately, it came way too late. So the trees will fall, and Phantom Assassin, not healthy either. Those one charges, the Maledict, okay, it's not going to be enough. It's level 4 Maledict, but it's still not enough to kill HFN. If the rock had hit from Yaps were there, I think he would have died, just thanks to the extra damage from Maledict, but alas, it was wide right. A word any Vikings fan knows well. What is this uh, dominated siege creep doing just sitting at the shrine? <laughs> Uh, I think it's just scouting. Yeah, but like no Hanging one's out. killing it. Now, now, okay, they, it times out. I don't know. Ace just doing Ace things. Mike going around. Probably a little upset he's died twice trying to pressure this mid tower. Mm -hmm. Grab vision of the shrine for himself. 
Definitely shows the problem though of Team Secret. Like you want to get really aggressive, but then you got the Fiend script from the Bane. One target gets locked in position and you just can't run away. So I'm still waiting for Pain Gaming to have a nice synergized team fight. Talvo caused a lot of problems bouncing around on bottom. Kept Doom just almost in a permanent permanent stun position. Do they but know, they've they never been together. Something. Now the Battle Fury has arrived for the Phantom Assassin. They shard up, snowball as well, ace to be controlled, the jump in, stifling dagger, and whoa! Ah, uh, hi, crit! <laughs> Wait, he's not playing. One of the issues with the range form lone druid is uh, you're a heck of a lot less tanky than you are when you're going melee form. Especially when he's up against a double damage rune on a phantom assassin. Indeed. With the battle fury. Yep. Unfortunately, they pop the DP ult, and they don't get any objective off of it, and it's just going to be kind of a retreat into farming, and... It's one of the down, like, not a downside of pain, but a CRISPR team either saves that cooldown or they're immediately going to backdoor this bottom tower at 400 health. And instead they just sort of grab the kill and then play super conservatively because they weren't fast enough. I'm surprised they actually didn't backdoor that, that tower. Like, you've got, you got the double damage on the Phantom Assassin, you had the Exorcism, you had the life, and no real big abilities were committed. It was shards and snowball. That was, that was the, the extent of the control abilities that... Yeah, you still. The thing is, they they ran out of sentries. They just got a couple delivered, I believe. And there's a Titan with Shadow Blade, Doom with Doom active, mm. and another Spirit with a Blink now. So, Why take the risk? Yeah, it's just hard if you're not fast enough because they don't want to fight with DP ult down, and they're afraid of the initiation from Secret, and rightly so. This Observer Ward admits getting good information for Pain. They see Ace and Yapsaw running down the mid, so the attack will come to mid T1 town. They're trying to find the kill before it. Mid one being slipped up by the car. Oh, no! Yapsaw! The two man kick in silence again! He's so good at it, the Nightmare buys time for Duster. HFN wants a good target to fight into in his ace. Underneath that tier one tower, Puppy paralyzing cask with no extra creep. It's arms as well as HFN who just get controlled. But here we go again, Tarbo rolling boulders forward. Where is this attack? No, PA, she got doomed. She was ready to jump in the mid one, but the control factors are way too high from Team Secret. But uh, with the patience of his ultimate and pain gaming, only having the life, the, uh, the Pangalier left alive. Yeah. PA is good against Doom in the sense that he has very little armor and you kill him in the laning phase, but throughout the game, he has no counterplay for that. If he, if he gets doomed, he's just going to die. You, yeah. you no longer really threaten anyone because you can't dagger them, you can't leap to them, and you, you just die in that time. And if God forbid Doom ever gets ags, that's the end of PA for the entire game. Yeah. And they didn't have their control because they lost their support so early. We're going once again, however. Tarvo's in the back lines. Wants to do a quick jump and the attack into Ace. The kick, however, still good with the avalanche combination. Bane gets deleted. A four-man silence giving to HFN. A little bit more confidence to jump forward, slow down Farner, Spirit Cypher, make sure there is no movement speed, mid one knows this is no fight, just TP's out, Puppy! <laughs> There's your crit, RNG can pull no. Pain back into this game and they ping Roshan instantly. They need to Rosh here, this is a huge win for them if they get the Sages. Well they had the end of the Exorcism, so this time they don't actually waste after a fight. They yeah, just keep on playing against Doom, Aegis is paramount, and obviously this isn't going to win them the game, oh they're bad. Yeah, they're worried. Yapsaw could go for mm -hmm. the steal, and they're tanking too much. True. And, and Yapsaw's Earth Spirit has been on point this game. Yep. Just crushing these fights for Secret. Already been a part of 17 of the 19 kills, but it's really just the damage output and the double stuns and the huge magnetizes. Yep. It's been, it's been definitely his game. A blink and going in for a Yule Scepter as well, so let's watch this mid fight once more. So, a nice isolation on mid one, but the kick follow up. Mm -hmm. Bane and Tuscar just have no effect. Yep. Ace, just, Ace takes so much damage, like it's crazy how fast he has to retreat just because PA leaps on him and he plays well, they get the big root on the DP and then he dies as well. Uh, the rolling bowl, uh, rolling, wait, is it rolling bolt? It's rolling it's thunder. Ro it's, uh, rolling bolt? No, it's, yeah, it's not rolling boulder, right? It's, uh, rolling thunder. Yeah. Because yeah. you got rolling boulder and rolling thunder. Yeah. Okay, that's why I was confused. I'm like, why I am I saying doing, the wrong I was, word? Was I bouldering, was I? Mm -hmm. Ah, well, yeah, that's me. I, no, I, I, think I it butcher all me. words. I think there is actually a rolling boulder, though. Yeah, there is, on ES. He's, 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 a roll, he's a rolling twit, all right? <laughs> that's what he is. As Tarbo begins the rolling twat, uh, down towards Farda. Just knock him around, snowball forward as well. They want to try and kill him off. The silences are good. And Doombringer and Witch Doctor get cleaned up very quickly before the rest of Team Secret can arrive. The Rolling Thunder does its work. 
I will say, the thing I'm concerned about Secret is that without this Radiance timing, since Lone Druid's going to range ball build, he doesn't have a natural timing where they're strong. And Pain Gaming has just DP ult and Pango ult, and then they, they're ready to rock. <laughs> yeah, he has to bounce back. More farm must be had. Not to mention the tier 3 tower defense after they've lost their mid. Remember, the Doom in the VP game, Pasha chose to get a blade now. Uh, Fossa's just going for this Crimson Guard right away, but at the moment he's running around with three armor, which I am not a fan of, because he is he's just exploding. He goes to zero when Pango hits him with the Heart Piercer, and then all of a sudden, he, he's just taking pure damage from PA. Well, and we, one crit and he's dead. This is kind of what we're tossing up, like with that, with the last picks coming in from Team Seeker, what was going to be a really good pick up against Pangolier? Like, even when he was picked up in the early phase, like, okay, you want to have something with armor, but the problem is Pangolier proves so much of this. So how do you actually sustain when he connects to you. Like, you want to pick up a blade mount, but does that armor even really remain with you? It's, it's more about removing yourself as a viable target. If you saw in the game Pasha played, like you just put yourself in a poor position and make them target you. Arms need some space. Yep, Sol puts the urn on him, and that should be enough to tick him out. Oh, the Duke up and down. Arms, he has a lot of life. Goes from the Spirit Siphon with the double silence. This actually allows Arms to turn around and buy more time for his teammates to arrive. Snowball, it doesn't get the pick up, but you do get the Walrus Punch and Tarvo rolling, thundering forward. Puppy, he has the Paralyzing Cast. No one's near King RD, but it actually doesn't matter when the Maledict will connect because no one's near King RD. They can't get any kind of rebuttal. Even if the stun doesn't do its work, Yaps are in Farda. And nightmare on Farda as Tarver just jumps up the hill. Duster may not be so lucky. Trying to get back into, into relative safety. HFN's nearby, but he knows he can't help out. One stifling dagger is all he can do. They really didn't want to take that fight. HFN just picked up his BKB. He was farming it in the meantime, and he had no teleport. And I like that, I mean, DP survives there, but he gets a little too greedy ex expecting team support. And now they're going to give up Roach for him. Yep. Even an invis room for Yaps, also we can stand guard. This is the worst case scenario for Pain. Fight you never wanted to take. And now, Roshan. And what have we got? We got a blink dagger for Tavo. They're on the way over. Roshan dies, so Ace has the Aegis Immortal, and then they do they want to really take this fight? I King RD continues to run forward. Arms does have the Exorcism and Paralyzing Cast. He's gonna bounce down to Tavo, and the BKB is burned to Phantom Assassin. She got doomed. So just tries to hide in the immunity, but there is no fight arriving. Um, they'll take that trade. They use Doom right as the PABKBs, so they cancel it out. But at the same time, they have Aegis, and that helps the Lone Druid a lot. And it allows, like, now they, they win the next fight, pretty much. They're rushing Silver Edge on the Tiny. I think once they get that item, they should be able to look for an engagement and just go straight for this Phantom Assassin. Or, or honestly, blowing up the Death Prophet's fine, too. It's really just kill one person before they cast a spell. Take whatever you can get. Mm -hmm. Pascal's gonna be in no position to really save. He's he's got it in the quick fire, but it's the dream with the blink dagger. Blink dagger into snowball can be the protection you require, especially with the lo the lower duration now. I believe on Silver Edge, it's uh, got it. Yeah. Is it? Yeah. Four seconds instead of five. Yeah. I believe. Yeah. 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 I think I remember that in the last change. Look, one second off. I mean, there, arms is pushing down. bottom. They have. They have Exorcism available, so they're good for a fight. Doom, while it's down, and also Doom completely absent. Yeah, they want to keep pushing. That Sentry Ward's still down before. Mid one gonna get hit pretty damn hard. Fiend's grip holds with position as oh, oh, oh. charges through three, and the Silence follow-up. Yapsaw, he tries to change his out with the big Magnetize. The BKB's not there to protect. Arms will actually go down as Ace. How, how much damage can he do? Even the kick from Yapsaw just holding Pain in position. HFN doesn't have the life. One charge just won't be enough. Yapsaw will have a double kill. The Magnetize did so much tick that all Ace had to do was sit there and give the extra bit of oomph damage. Uh, it's such a hard fight to take in Aegis, and it's all that wolf creep, Toby. Like, I can't under you cannot underestimate just how strong this, this creep is. It's 30% damage on a hero that now hitting for 200 thanks to it. And I feel like that fight just comes down to Aegis, where... They're comfortable taking it. Yep. You can see DB goes in, casts the silence on mid one, who's a little out of position, but they use so much to kill mid one. Once this rolling thunder ends, all of a sudden they're out of damage. And the PA has DD for this fight, if I'm not mistaken, but he's just getting kited the, for the roll away from Yapsor after the leap. And now he's not on a target. Ace is just cleaning up with the Dragonlance, hitting people from a billion units away, and everybody's dead. And how many times, like, like so HFN bailed out at the start of that fight just because Yapsor was able to be the initiation. 
And then he realizes, okay, I got an opportunity to jump back mm. in, but my BKB is now worn off and then gets double kicked by Yapsaw. I'm wondering if he starts becoming like target number one sometime soon, just to get rid of this ES effect. He's 8, 2, and 15 right now, present for 23 out of 26 kills. And this is part of the reason this hero seems to be really, really weak in the wrong Mid player's one. hands, but with the absolute great. There's so many heroes. Oh. oh, the Phantom Strike! He goes up to the Kree Wave at the same time as Mid One trying to attack him, so a Fiend's Grip attack. Maybe they have the Crimson Guard protection. It's not going to be enough. Down for 54 seconds. The crit spilling out into Poppy. Pounds. He can't turn it around. And here we go again. The Magnetize turn on. HFN is trapped inside the root. Poppy needs some distance. HFN won't take out from this. The fight very much split out. As Pain Gaming lose four. Tavo just wants to roll away from this nightmare. He won't be able to do such a thing, but Yapsaw wants to keep the chase going. Puts on the urn charge, up and towards the air. Pangolier hits the deck, can't jump out. The Blink Dagger being disabled. Yapsaw stays right on the tail. He even kicks him further away, knowing the kill was coming in from Ace's last attack. He's actually out of rocks too, so that was really his only play. He's got just the one left, so they're going to be a little weaker in team fights. He won't be able to make that huge counter initiation, but at this point, Ace is finally in the top net worth, and he'll have MKB finished soon, and then this PA is just going to be... Toast. He'll, he'll, yeah, I was going to say he'll go through him like butter on toast, but that analogy, that didn't make sense in my head. <laughs> like a knife through like hot a, yeah, butter. Yeah, that's, like, what, like, that's what I was going for. I'm like, trying to work out which, which analogy you're going for. Like, just like done a, done a half cross. Yep. Mm -hmm. Team Secret. So what have they got? They can wait for the next Roshan that could potentially spawn up in three minutes. Meanwhile, removing all out of towers, Puppy. Uh, he really couldn't have stuck around down there. That's just a freebie. He's worth almost 500 gold for this kill. But yes, so it's a double kick silence once more. The Savage Raw sends the Tusker away. So HFN into the BKB mid one. So low on life. They have to kill off Ace, however. He's primary target number uno with the Cycling Dagger. They've got the slow. They break the Aegis of the Immortal. They get rid of there as well. So Pain Gaming stand around. They want this lone druid. He's got so much behind him. The unstoppable streak ended by um 655 gold for it. And that for a tier two tower is very much a worthwhile trade for Pain Gaming. If they just wait 300 gold for Ace to finish his MKB, they're winning that fight 100%. But once the PA BKBs, they no longer do any damage, and Lone Druid is effectively missing half of his hits. So it's just no patience there from Secret. They, they're not going to get that kill 100 to 0 on a PA. Yep. It looked like a good initiation after Puppy died, though. Like, the, no. the second that double kick came in, I'm like, okay, well, now PA is in trouble. But you're right, he triggered BKB when he went down to 20% of his HP, and they just look for a new target. Bata is presenting himself in the mid for the silences. This time they bring both Dust as well as Sentry's Puppy. Oh, ho, ho, ho! the damage combining Tavo and PA together. Way too much for Team Secret to handle. Fada wants to go for the Doom, actually gets it off. It's on the PA. Yapsaw jumping in close, gets a good magnetize, but he doesn't get the Phantom Assassin with this. So Doom once again being expended. Death Prophet's in a world of hurt. No Yule set to save her. So just accepts the fact that Death Prophet is dead. Doom will go down once more. The pain game and get away with very few casualties. I say that. Yamsaw, does he have help? Can he do this solo? Tavo? No. He'll jump away. But, uh, Tavo choosing to go for a totally different build from Ice, where Ice went for a lot of tanky items. He's gone double javelin already after the blink. And he, he had that at the very, very start. Mm -hmm. Like, he actually went double javelin into the blink dagger, yeah. and now he's going to go Lincoln Sphere. So. At this point of the game, I'm wondering if Tav is like, I'm the man who can actually get the money, and I link into the Phantom Assassin. Yeah. I'm just not sure if I... I don't know. I don't really understand Pango that well. Winter was saying that, you know, in his conversations with Ice, they prefer this tanky style because you just never die. You could absorb damage and just sort of play more of a control Pango, but this way he can one-shot Witch Doctors, so... Yeah. That's something. That's basically what happened in mid. So that you use him as the uh, as the pickoff of the backline and, and the enabler of your one. I, I just they need to find the app store is the problem, but now he's got a Yoles on top of the blink. Has that armor talent. It's just I don't know how you're going to take him down from now on. More and more damage needs to be built up onto the Phantom Assassin. They're actually going to go double Lincoln, so both the Pangolier mm. as well as the Phantom Assassin are getting it. 
But no one's gonna have unstoppable damage. I really wish he had gone like a, a Deso, perhaps, instead of this S and Y, or even just rushing the Lincolns. But... Pain got some information. Puppy. Oh, King RD jumps up. The shot oh. block. Actually locks Puppy in perfectly. He can't stay invisible on the Glimmer Cape is worn off, and HFN has jumped in. The Vanguard is there to actually protect him. Arms BKB in through the rear. This is a great position for them. Oh. Jumping in deep. Ace gets bounced around. There's no way for Secret to control this fight. As Pain even had the Fiend's grip available for Fada. Yep, so will free him with the kick, but now. He'll lose his own life for it. Yule stuff in towards the air, stunned as he hits the ground. He'll sell fuel this time around with the magnetize, with the kick, but Tarbo from range throwing in the swashbuckling attack. Team Secret now four heroes down, and with the rest of the exorcism, Pain are coming high ground. Double buyback out from Team Secret. Doom is available. The only one they care about is Ace, and they know he doesn't have it. He just finished that MKB. Yep. So Yatsol needs to get this control, and he got it. A three-man kick. The Nightmare, however, bought a little bit more space, but the Doom is onto the Phantom Assassin. She has to get away from this one. King RD, Snowball, and Chance creating more space. He may lose his life for it, however. The Silence makes it difficult for Team Secret to keep the chase going. A blink down. King RD will get the TP out. Talvo needs to do the same kind of thing. Jumps down the hill. They're TPing over towards the Shrine, but HFN, he couldn't run away. Yapsaw managed to track him down, but up towards the top, Tarvo still on the run. Blink off cooldown, Observer Ward. There's your Yule Scepter. He'll hit the deck, Tarvo needs some space creation, but the kick, the control, is perfect from Team Secret. And Pain Gaming, did they push a little bit too hard? They... It's fine to do some damage right after the buybacks, but I feel like you gotta get away and certainly not tank a triple stun to the face. Mm. And then, then once again, the Doom on PA just takes him out. There's no counterplay for that right now, and once he's doomed, like, it's just so easy for Yapsor to hunt him down afterwards. And they didn't want to lose this money either. Like, the Lincoln Sphere for the Pangolier is almost completed, but the Phantom Assassin just falling behind a little bit with uh, their streaks being ended. It was Yapsor who also got all of that cash, 529 gold for the kill on the PA. So he's already building in for a four staff now. Did he get something else? Because I feel like he had more yeah. money. No, he just he just yeah. spent obs obsession. You can see the uh, the rolling thunder here was just like game changing. He blinks in, gets the stun on both Tiny and Lone Druid, and then comes right back, finishes off the Lone Druid, the grip on Doom. It's a really well executed fight from Pain, and just goes to show how important the initiation was, because they take out Puppy without Maledict becoming an issue, and that is a big spell in this game, and it really helps his team take down both DP and Pango. But this is when we can look at the nice side of the fight for Pain Gaming. There's also no, there was no Doom in that fight, and it's the same in the game we just saw with VP. The Doom wants to initiate with Doom. That is the key to the hero. You want to get somebody before they cast their spells. As soon as DP ults, he's no longer a Doom target, and it's the same with the PA. The sooner you can get the PA doomed, the easier it is to kill him, and then the damage output of Pain just disappears, and you have this 15 second window where you can win the fight. Fada's actually going to sacrifice his buyback to get that Blink Dagger, so we can get the initiation you're talking about. I think it's the right choice. Phantom Assassin now actually has the 20% lifesteal. I know Doom stops things like uh, like the lifesteal in Lifestealer, mm -hmm. but does it actually stop the talent lifesteal of a Phantom Assassin? Um, it does once you have Ags. Before Ags, it does not stop it. I don't know, okay. because uh, it, does, it no longer uh, disables passives. Um, the one thing to note is that he actually has an ensnare creep already, and that is because it is the one thing that can cancel B uh, Lincoln's through BKB right now. And mm -hmm. it'll prevent, even if the PA gets like it's obviously oh, he'll Tosca, still be able to Are you it. really doing this? Both of the scans came up positive. Isn't there was there? definitely disease in the mid lane. Arm's gonna blink himself in deeper with the exorcism. The Doom is out, is on the Phantom Assassin as he just runs away, trying to battle against Puppy. Tarvo gets back down the hill. Tusker did buy back. He just wanted to break the smoke, break the fight, and the control, however. Bear is there. Ace brings down Tarvo. A Yule Scepter will buy some time for Death Prophet. Blink Dagger. And actually, the Glimmer Cape allows him to stay in. He didn't blink away. Mid one was standing on top of him. Only now do you actually have the Fiend's Grip control mid one, but he breaks free of it. Ace is so low. Oh, HFN will jump in and get that kill. Magnetize from Yamsaw comes a little too late, and it's mid one. Back into Invis. They cannot see the target. Yapsaw flies the kick, and then gets the silence onto the PA. Man, he's just being a pain in the butt. And Pain Gaming will back out with the 2 2 trade. Did they recover the gem on uh, Pain? No, they did not. Gem of True Sights. Yeah, it's the Doom. It's a big win for Secret then. It's a, mostly res what's responsible for the gold swing there. But you they can also jump like that PA right into Roshan. Now that it gets scattered out, you can flip out the, the Dark Troll Summoner. But this is yeah, but this is Nagus the Immortal. They want this Agus and Cheese for Pain Gaming. 
<laughs> do they have the confidence to try and do it? Yep, so is up. They want to use this vision before it goes down. As soon as Doom runs mid, they're going to get this ward. You can see uh, he just pinged it. Yep, they're going to get both wards now. They have to deal with bottom lane too. That's a decent yeah. creep wave. I suppose Pangalia can get rid of that as he's spawning up now. Just such a huge win to see. The vision control is paramount right now, especially with Roche up. And if they can just control this mid lane and that hill on Radiant side, you can see they have a ward on the shrine. They have another ward middle. This is a really easy fight for Secret to win. They just want to wait the 40 seconds for Doom back up. 40 seconds and Exodism is back up. Did you see how much damage Ace did to the DP though? Like, still no armor yeah. items. Like, as he just hits him. On, but now they've got to deal with at least the double Lincoln Sphere. So that got completed on HFN. So you've got Tarvo as well as HFN. Who have that ability to potentially block the Doom, see the target it comes on, get that Lincoln Spear up quickly. Roshan is already down to one third of his life. Yep, so you can feel him itching on the edge. Wants to jump in, wants to look for the kill. They put the extra Lincoln's effect onto HFN, so they can't control him. Here comes Team Secret into the pit. Yep, so the kick does fly through. And now King RD, they control the back lines. Who gets Roshan? Mid one of the cover of BKB. Fighting inside the pit, the bear is so low. Mid one has the Aegis the Immortal. It was Secret who got the kill. And they're jumping out the kick again. It cashed in the back lines. The Phantom Assassin, she just wanted to get back out of this, but Pain Gaming can't go anywhere. Arms, Snowball will protect him. It's buying more time, at least for the Exorcism to do work, but another double kick and the silence. Pain Gaming, they just can't catch a break here. Team Secret ensuring it. As it is only, only Tarbo alive, and Team Secret are already coming down straight mid lane. They're looking for a Rax, and they've got all the time in the world. Indeed. Uh, as he TP'd in, Ace grabbed the Wolf Creep, runs straight over. He is not pressured whatsoever during that fight, and he is just pumping out oodles of damage into pain. If they don't deal with him, he's going to kill everybody on their lineup. And he's the one actually slaughtering the PA in the pit. Look at Secret. They're posturing. They're like, if you want to come at us? I don't think they have buybacks, guys. They can just go straight for GG's. Exactly what they're doing right now. Pain Gaming will not be up in time. This game will belong to Team Secret. Tarvo can try and delay them. At least he can kill off the bear of Lone Druid. That's uh, one small upside. Uh, downside is, actually, there is no resummon for 20 seconds. So, Tarvo up. Take away from Fada. Fada has the Doom. One Doom and uh, this whole delay is gone. That's why Tarvo, he'll tank it with the Lincoln Sphere. Fada still has that Doom available. And Tarvo, there's not a lot he can do. Ace is sitting at the back lines. They know he's the primary target. Here's the life. Coming back up again for Pain Gaming. Rolling Boulder forward. Mid one protected by BKB. He does get flipped at the end, but that is Team Secret. Finishing the throne, finishing the game in 36 minutes time. Yeah. Yep. They were they were slightly they were close. tested.